All right, welcome back. Uh, change to a different uh, aspect ratio. Uh, seems to be, looks a little better. So the last video, I talked about this no steering and how I hated it. Well, I still hate it, but I think, and I won't know this until I get it done and get all the weight on it and have to see what kind of pressure this strut's going to need. So uh, it was bugging me about it and the fact that, you know, a 900 plus ounce er servo was struggling. So I came out here and I relieved some pressure. It's because it, I, I thought about the Tomcat. The Tomcat mains have the same thing. They have a seal and the inside, the, the smaller piston rotates inside that, that, that outer, outer casing with a seal and it has to be lubed from the stroking of it because there's oil inside. And if you put too much pressure in there, um, they would, it would cause the gear not to come up. So I came out here and I took some pressure out and it made this thing, it moves a lot easier now. So I put about 25, maybe 30 PSI in here right now. And you know, it takes quite a bit to stroke it down, but even when you pull it all the way down, it's still got some sponge to it. So that's my thought on this. So once it's all done and built, uh, if I can adjust the pressure, you get about a half stroke on it there. That's kind of what you want. That way you got some down and some up. You know, you don't want it fully stroked because uh, that typically is too hard um, and doesn't really do much for you. I know a lot of people will do that to kind of help get the nose up, especially like on the F-18. So they, they cruise along like this. It gives it a kind of a positive AO to help it take off. Uh, the Tomcat does that just because the damn thing's so heavy and the, the main squats so much with, with fuel on them. But um, so we'll see how this goes. So I'm kind of painting some things right now. Uh, I got the lights off here. I'm using this vinyl and fabric painting, just some stuff I bought at the bottom of the store. It works great. It's for painting plastic pieces inside your car and stuff like that. It looks great, matches pretty pretty close. Uh, so these that I couldn't take off, I'm just gonna kind of do, do by hand. Uh, I also took this back apart, um, flattened this a little bit better, and I changed out some hardware uh, that you can kind of see here. I put longer, um, it's kind of hard to see some Hopefully you guys can see that there. I put longer screws. That way I could put a nut on the back side of it. Probably didn't need it. Um, and I'm also going to put a screw instead of a set screw. I'm going to use one of these guys right here to go in here. Saw this from the it just set screws or just this will help me because I couldn't get it tight like I wanted. I was worried about stripping it. So I'm going to put this one in here. So uh, it'll look like, I got to pay attention, a little, little like that right there. And there's plenty of clearance for it. So um, I put a longer, this is, it's kind of hard to see, but this little arm right here is what steers this whole wheel. So the shaft comes down, it's welded onto this metal steel arm, and there's a little dog bone that goes over to this piece, this bottom piece here, and that's what rotates. So I put a longer stainless steel screw in there with two nuts on it um, to help keep it locked. And I went over everything, make sure everything's tight. Ooh, I need to take that off and paint that. But uh, I can do that anytime because I just needed to get the light top light piece on because that it goes through this uh, piece here. I put a little oil in here, grease in here, and I kind of don't like this piece. It's just more friction. And I mean, it moves up and down on it really well, but it binds like, so when you put it in there, right, it binds and it, it just, yeah, anyways. So kind of back stepped a little bit. I took this top plate off. I'm putting in some stainless steel screws for there and then I'll put it all back together and just go with it because I got more torque their torque that they're using, the factory using, most people use is M MKS is something, I looked it up, it's like 600 ounces of torque, this is 900 plus ounces of torque, so it should be fine. Everybody says, uh, you just don't 
don't move the server, the no steering unless it's moving forward. I'm like, well, that's crap. That's why I hate direct drive. Um, all right, so while that's dr the paint's drying, I kind of moved on to this rear pod, which houses the chute. And if anybody knows, let me get my phone, make sure I can, make sure you guys are seeing this. Anybody knows what the hell this is for? Let me know, because right here, there's a little ball, like a little plastic ball in, you know, like you would thread in on the end of a, uh, a gear door. There's a little plastic ball end right here with a mount and a screw that holds it on. This is the part that flips up. And I don't know what the heck that's for. You know, it's magnet, it's got a magnet that holds it down. I don't know if, if you're meant to attach the chute there. I wouldn't think so. So this piece is, with the mechanism that they have in here in, it's heavy. So I took it out, and here's what you got. So look at this big monstrosity thing. So this is what, the, and it's fully extended right now. So this is what you have um, in that, basically this, this little tube here is inside. And then I, this goes through and has like a, a rod that goes through and it sits just like this inside there. And this is what pushes your chute out. And I put it on a, just a battery and ran it and it's kind of slow. Uh, and you know, it's, it's about just under 200, um, 200 grams for this thing. It's kind of heavy. And so I was looking at maybe swapping it out with something and I'm looking at, this is the 140 linear actuator and it almost gets the same stroke distance. I mean, it's maybe an inch and a half shorter than this thing is. Um, and it's, it weighs 80, what was it? 85 grams versus 190. So it saves some weight. And uh, I think this is the fastest ratio. It's faster. I would just have to just take and put that little piece on the end here, which is just a G10 piece. And it would sit probably essentially just like, like this because theirs didn't go to about right here. And I'm guessing they figure, you know, the chute's so thick that it, you know, this part will start pushing out. So that's about what, what it would need to be is like right there. Um, so I would just build, honestly, I'd probably just run a, a screw, uh, something right back on the back side of this. That way it's got this wood to kind of help support it. So I could glue to run it all the way through. And that's what would go through the back part I'm not showing you guys anything, am I? Uh, this back part of the, of the actuator. So just put something here on this. So it would kind of be like this. We're obviously, we're obviously talking inside here. So I'd run all the way through and just pin it right about there on that bulkhead. Gives it some extra strength. And then that kind of gets you what you want. So um, I'll kind of show you. I don't know. It uses a, J, a JP, one thing I don't like is it uses the JP gear controller, uh, which I have sold so many um, Zykoi gear controllers to replace their crappy uh, gear controller. So I'm just gonna put this thing on here and show you how, how this is 6.6 .6 volts. I don't know what it runs normally, but, oh, that's the wrong way, sorry. So that's pretty slow. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, thousand four, thousand five, thousand six, thousand seven. About about six to seven seconds for that. Um, and let's see. Does the where's the stupid control? Oh, here's the controller. Um, I don't know what voltage it says. Oh, so you can go eight point four. Okay. So obviously that'll speed up a little bit, but here is this guy. So let's plug him in. What the heck? 
goes. Had the wrong pulse. So all the way down, and this may not be much better. So let's go full th throw here. So thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, thousand four, thousand five. A little bit faster. So it's just if I want to deal with the weight. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. We'll see. I may just say screw it, put it in there and go with it. Um, you know, because this the only thing that sucks is this needs another battery uh, or tie into a battery, the battery system and more leads when I can just run this straight to the linear actuator. I can run straight to the uh, an open channel on the power system and it works just like a normal servo. This is I don't know because there's no instructions as usual, but if it's if you plug it into the brake. It's a two wire. If you plug it into the the wheel, it's just going to go to an amp and go both ways, and it's going to amp out. So we'll see. Um, but I'm kind of doing a little bit of that. I'll finish this today. Start working on this. Kind of decide on what I want to do with that, and then I'm going to put the engines in, the pipes, get the cones on. Um, Still don't really understand this thing. I haven't seen any pictures. From what I was told, people said that they go in here, you know, some way like this, but that just looks, I don't understand it. It looks horrible. So I don't know, unless that's, I don't know. They're not very flat. They're just kind of wavy. You know, the same with this. They. I'm almost gonna put this on a, I'm gonna get my little long sanding bar and sand these things flush because they're, you know, they're just, they cut them horribly wrong. So, but yeah, it supposedly goes in here somewhere like this, but I haven't seen any pictures of that. So if anybody's got any pictures of this, how this actually works, shoot them, let me know, point me in the right direction. I'll take a look at them, see if I even wanna fool with them. I may not even, gonna, may not even put them on here um, because that's the only way I can see that they kind of go is doing something like that, but. Yeah, so I'll get that done, get the motors in, and then at that point it's running wires, getting everything put forward, and then I'll put, I'll go ahead and do the tanks and start working forward. So, but yeah, if anybody knows what this is, like I said, I don't know what the heck this is. It's, it's, it's a plastic ball end on here, unless they did it to make it look like something. But, uh, yeah, only thing I can think of is maybe that's where you, they wanted you to attach your your parachute, but that seems like an odd way to do it. But you guys take it easy. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down if you like the video. Uh, I got some good questions. People are talking about the torque and stuff. I'm like, yeah, well, I mean, I understand how torque works, but the specs on these servos, from what I understand, are designed uh, for one inch. So you put a so when they spec these servos. Um, that's what they're doing. They're doing it at one inch perpendicular to the shaft. Um, now you would think as you went shorter, you get more torque. That is a true statement. But when there's no mechanical advantage, uh, that's the issue here. Like you need, like when there's this much, so much force to turn something and something that's definitely getting like direct feedback into the servo, you need some kind of mechanical advantage because it, it will just, it'll destroy a servo. So same for the control surface, that's how you get flutter. So you wanna have a positive mechanical advantage versus, because see you have an arm here, uh, but because you're direct, servo, direct into the ser servo, it actually is a negative for you. So it takes away the, the torque, so. Um, Actually, hold on, let me think about that. No, that would actually be like, because this is just a straight extension. So, yeah, you do have a little mechanical advantage now that I look at it, which would be a way to fix this is to go a bigger arm. Yeah, that's all they could, that'd be an easier fix for them is 
put, I know it wouldn't be necessarily scale, but put an arm, because this is the section that moves right here. So if they put an arm on it to kind of extend it out and then extend this one out, that would help. But, so there is a little bit of an arm. I guess that's about as good as you're gonna get. So, anyways, you guys have a good one. It's kind of a long-winded video. Uh, I gotta go do some things, go work out, go get some my afternoon coffee. Uh, my butt's dragging, so you guys take it easy.